Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Hello, Instagram. Hello, everybody tuning in. Uh, Wednesday morning here, uh, about 8.30, 8.25 in the morning on Wednesday. I don't even know the date. It must be like the 15th or something, um, right? Yeah, the 15th, uh, which should be tax day. Uh, here in the U.S., April 15th, Wednesday, April 15th. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending upon when you're tuning into this. Uh, thank you for your support. I'm going to talk about fish and mercury content and why certain fish have very high levels of mercury and what fish to avoid. Our goal here at Aroma Time is to empower you to eat better, eat healthier food, eat real food, uh, nourish your body, boost your immune system, keep strong and be able to um, eat gourmet food still. Uh, the whole restaurant was founded on that premise of higher quality food, healthier food, but still in a gourmet preparation. Um, that is our, that's been our goal since day one, 2003, as a chef who was killing myself with my fork uh, years ago, we developed multiple issues, uh, health issues, and all from diet, by the way. I was working in places that were serving extremely um, fancy, rich, uh, Epicurean food, uh, places that were very highly rated, but loaded with the butter, the cream, the white flour, the fried foods, uh, the excessive proteins, um, things like that, that were just, a lot of that stuff was unnecessary in a diet. And then you add in junk food, and most people don't even really think twice about, you know, going to McDonald's. A lot of our viewers do because a lot of our viewers, a lot of our fans, a lot of our guests here uh, have a different mindset. But the majority of Americans don't think twice about going to McDonald's or buying a bag of chips and they don't look at ingredients. And when you add in all these types of food into your diet, um, things happen to your body. And I went through a, a, um, a big health revelation back in the late 90s and reversed a lot of the things that I had wrong with me, got off all my meds, reversed my asthma that I had my whole life, lost a bunch of weight, um, did some really rem uh, remarkable things that my doctor couldn't believe, nor did he ask me how I did it, nor did he tell me how to do it, because of course, unfortunately, um, doctors aren't trained in things like that. Um, some doctors know, and some doctors take it upon themselves to, to, to train themselves in that, but a lot of doctors just don't know the medical system's not set up to, to um, teach us how to ju uh, juice wheatgrass, and, um, and eat less animal proteins and, and veggies and fruits and, and uh, things like that. I mean, doctors know basics. A lot of healthcare professionals know the basics of that. But a lot of them um, uh, don't. Uh, and they're taught uh, you know, to keep administering drugs. And my doctor wanted to give me cholesterol medication at 28. And I said, I'm not taking it. And he goes, but you have to. You have no choice. And I said, please, I don't want to. And he... He gave me 30 days. Um, I actually had talked him into giving me 30 days and come back and doing more blood tests. And I kind of I kind of knew already what I wanted to do. I, Jamie and I were living in Colorado, and that is a state with a lot of young, active people. And I remember the person I was buying our organic produce from would run up Pikes Peak uh, for the fun of it once a year, do the Pikes Peak Marathon. And I'm like, man, I've never even hiked Pikes Peak. I I get tired driving up Pikes Peak, and you're running up it, uh, up the Bar Trail, and. Um, I asked him what his secret was, and of course it was diet and nutrition, and he was like 55 years old and in fantastic shape. His name was Chris, the old, he owned Boulder Fruit Exchange. Uh, he loaded, later sold that to Albert's Organics, which is a part of UNFI, United Natural Foods. Um, but he uh, founded that, that company on local produce and then organic produce. We bought a lot from him at the restaurant that I was at in Colorado. And so I became friendly with him, and, and yeah, and he would, um, he would, like, like he goes, Mark, it's all with what you eat. And so I kind of knew that I had to alter my diet, especially when I would, my doctor said, you need cholesterol meds. And I convinced them to give me 30 days. I tried this new diet approach of, of more fruits and veggies. I went to grass-fed meats from grain-fed meats, wild salmon, and uh, just went through this whole revelation. And 30 days later, my cholesterol had plummeted. And all of a sudden, I didn't... My, blood pressure was dropping, my weight was dropping, asthma was disappearing, um, things were happening that um, my doctor couldn't believe. Um, and he goes, I don't know, he has actual word to me, he goes, I don't know what you did, um, 
but the medicine I was gonna give you wouldn't have even worked this good. He never asked me what I did. So I was able to um, read a lot of alternative doctors, medical doctors, people that were into nutrition and figure all this out. And I, you know, we are what we eat. We are 100%, we are already intimate. Uh, eating is the most intimate thing you will ever do in your life. Things that you put into your mouth assimilate into your body and become you. Um, so eating is a very intimate um, activity that we don't think of it that way, but you are what you eat. The more Doritos you eat, the more things like that, um, becomes your body chemistry, okay? This is what absorbs into your body. Healthy foods, the more veggies you eat, the more fruits you eat, the more, um, the more cleaner proteins, the, uh, all that kind of stuff, the less fried foods. This all becomes, and a lot of a lot of people that that I talk to, a lot of runners that I talk to, because I, I do a lot of running, a lot of runners I talk to will tell you, "Oh man, I ate bad yesterday. And I, I, I just I, my, my run, I'm, my body's not performing today," because um, they know there's that correlation of, "Hey, I ate bad yesterday." There's a correlation of, "I can't run like I normally do." Then when I when I eat good, so there's definitely a lot of people have that correlation. Uh, so today I want to talk about um, mercury and fish. Mercury and fish is a it's been a thing that's been issues an issue for years. Um, too bad that you can't go into the store and actually look at the fish you're buying and see the mercury levels, um, or see that hey, this mercury, this fish is flagged red because of mercury. All right, this fish is flagged red because it's the highest levels of mercury, and and you don't walk into a fish store and you don't pick up frozen fish that actually has these warnings on it, um, and it's a shame that you don't because. Most consumers are in the blind about this. And then when you have diets that come out and say, oh, eat all this tuna, and you're going out and buying canned albacore tuna, and you're eating all this tuna, and then all of a sudden you're not realizing you could be poisoning yourself with mercury long-term or short-term. or short -term. I've seen lots of people um, through videos and through news uh, that, have, that have done these tuna fish diets that have, um, that they've, 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 they've actually experienced some, some health health ailments because of mercury and they stop eating it and some of that stuff goes away. So first of all, um, if you're tuning in live, drop a comment, hashtag live. If you're on the replay, hashtag replay. And also wherever you're tuning in from is also fantastic. Just so I kind of like to see where all of our viewers are coming from. We have a lot here in New York because of course a lot of you are fans of the restaurant. You come to the restaurant, we do business with you, I buy stuff from you, I keep see a couple of wine people on, uh, wine reps on this morning. Um, and But some of you, um, a lot of, I have a lot of people that watch our YouTube videos um, and our Facebook from a distance that either have found us through organic searches because they're looking for a specific topic, especially on my YouTube channel with um, 90,000 subscribers on YouTube. We have a vast covering on YouTube of, of where our videos end up and I have a salmon documentary on there that has I think about 5 million views alone. So people find us all over. So just drop a comment of where you're tuning in from. That'd be fantastic. I'd appreciate that. And I really can't see comments on my phone. I have to look down at my computer uh, to see some comments. Um, so sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. I don't know why that is. So let's talk about um, mercury. Uh, in fish, and where well, let's find out first of all, where does mercury come from? I'm gonna, I'm gonna read a quote here that I just got off the internet about because mercury is in the environment, it dissipates, it falls down, it goes into our land, into our soil, into our water. So, how does mercury get into fish? The mercury found in fish is a methyl mercury. First, mercury is released into the air and then settles onto the land and into the water. Bacteria and other microorganisms convert the mercury into methyl mercury. Then fish and shellfish in the water begin to absorb it. Fish that eat other fish who live longer have higher mercury levels. So fish that live longer have higher mercury levels. That's the first clue that we want here. Um, because, and I've always said this, fish eat other fish, and these fish are eating, you know, microorganisms. They're, they're just, they're, they're, they're around longer, and they're bioconcentrating along the way these harmful, um, harmful substances like mercury. So mercury is something that gets passed on from the environment, from one fish to another fish to another fish. So if you're eating a fish that is 30 years old compared to a fish that's three years old, that 30-year-old fish that's eaten a lot more fish 
than the three-year-old fish or have been in the environment a lot longer to be able to absorb. And this is why our tuna that we serve at the restaurant, the line-caught Pacific Northwest tuna, has the lowest mercury because these fish are literally 25 pounds. The average weight or what these fish grow to normally, the, those kind of tuna, are up to 75 pounds. And when you get a fish that's 75 pounds, it's lived a lot longer versus 25 pounds. Now, I have a couple portions around uh, uh, right now. I have a portion around. This This is a half of our tuna loin. They, this, if you've eaten our tuna at the restaurant, our, our albacore tuna that's rolled in sesame seeds and seared, I actually did a video yesterday of me doing that in the kitchen. Literally, it's a 30-second process of rolling it, getting your pan hot, a little bit of oil, and searing it and taking it out. That's all that that is. It's a very simple process. So this is the tuna that we use. This is a line caught Pacific Northwest albacore tuna. Um, so um, this is this is half the loin, right? So the other half is probably about that big. So these fish are from head to tail, 25 pound fish. They're not big fish. Tuna, just so you know, tuna um, probably has one of the highest mercury contents of fish because when you go eat sushi um, and you're eating this other tuna, you these tunas are can be quite large. In fact, several hundred pounds. And these fish have been around for some of these fish. Tuna will, like the sushi fish, the sushi tuna fish, will um, will go up in, into um, what was it, 80 pounds or um, 80 pounds or about 80, no, I'm sorry, not 80 pounds, 80 pounds or albacore, about 80 years. A tuna can actually live for about 80 years. So, um, um, that's the story with that. So, um, Chris is saying we'd like to order the seared tuna tonight. Um, so tonight is pizza night. Um, tonight is pizza night. We are doing buy one, get one pizza every Wednesday night. That's the deal with that. Somebody's at the back door. Just see. Okay. 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 There's a delivery coming in right now, it looks like. Um, lots of local produce, organic produce, stuff like that. Jamie's got the order. So um, let's get back to the fish here. So let me read off a list to you. You can go online and you can Google um, the fish that have the highest mercury versus fish that have the lowest mercury. And again, you know, things like sardines, things like anchovies, those are going to be, um, obviously those are much smaller fish, right? So there's going to be on the smaller side. Um, the one thing I would never trust, never, ever, ever trust is farmed salmon. Farmed salmon it's just loaded with a ton of different kinds of contaminants. It is um, just the way they farm it. Um, the fish are not that active. They build up a lot of fat. And in those fat stores, and the fat in the fish is where all those toxins are built up into. Okay, they're, they're, they're um, absorbed up into the fat content. So um, here's some tuna facts. So Atlantic bluefin tuna grow to 500 pounds. Um, big eye tuna. Uh, 250 pounds, southern bluefin tuna, uh, 320 pounds. These are what these fish go up to. Skipjack tuna, 42 pounds. Albacore tuna, about 80 pounds. Albacore tuna is what you're gonna, a lot of, a lot of times buy in cans. You'll buy cans of albacore tuna, and that's what you're getting is these. Now, again, the maximum of albacore tuna is 80 pounds, so that's, you know, um, yes, that was a special order. So we have stuff coming in right now, some of our special orders uh, from Murray's Cheese. If you're on our email list, by the way, we can get you anything that Murray's Cheese, Jamie was just showing me, making sure that it was correct. Uh, Murray's Cheese, murrayscheese.com, the biggest, most famous cheese store probably in the country, um, thousands and thousands of cheeses. Whatever they have in their store, we can get for you, um, I think three days a week now, we can actually pull from Murray's. So we just had some cheese walk in uh, through our Murray's cheese program, some special orders. Jamie's just showing me the label and making sure that was correct what we ordered. Right, we had several guests that took, took us uh, advantage on that. Because Murray's is in New York City, um, they have very limited employees right now. They, um, so they have a very limited capabilities than they normally do. Uh, of course, they're taking all the precautions and everything. So um, less staff, less people in there. Um, so we can't get six days. We used to be able to get Mur Murray's literally five or six days a week. By three o'clock, let them know what we wanted. It would be to us the next day. It was an amazing program. Now it's like three days a week because of the very limited staff they have and capabilities they have. Um, so, um, by the way, um, back to the tuna here. So you can see 
um, cans of albacore tuna, these fish are huge fish. These fish are long line caught or net caught. We hear a lot about how, um, how uh, uh, salmon, uh, tuna um, sometimes has dolphin free um, nets or something exclusion for dolphins because dolphins go into the nets as well, unfortunately. Uh, that's just what happens. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the way you catch fish has bycatch issues. So, which means you're targeting more than the one species that you're going after. You target one species, but you're catching more than that species. And a lot of times, they don't have a use for the other species. So, either gets thrown back alive or dead. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times it, they get thrown back you know, not in great shape, especially when they're when they're caught in nets or on long lines. Um, mahi mahi is famous for catching sea turtles when you're doing long line fishing. Long line fishing is you throw out thousands of feet of hooks and you let the hooks just sit there for hours upon hours upon hours and then you reel it up hydraulically and pull all these fish onto the dock and you don't find out what you have. Sometimes you catch fish eight hours earlier that are sitting on that hook um, and you won't know until much, much, much later until you've got the wrong fish, you know, pull it all up. The nice thing about line caught, one hook, one fish is you get something on the hook, you reel it in, you bring it in, wrong fish, take it off, throw it back in, go back for your targeted species. So hook fishery, one line, one hook, is the most sustainable, least bycatch way to catch fish wild. That's, that's hands down. Our mahi is line caught, our tuna is line caught, our salmon is line caught. Those are all single hook, single line caught items. Other long line species are a little bit different because um, uh, uh, wherever you're at, like like bottom long line for halibut, you're not going to get other a lot of different other bycatch. Um, but certain things like mahi lo uh, mahi long line, um, you can get not even any mahi on those hooks. So each each species, each region varies differently based on that. But I know mahi around around the equator, especially through Ecuador. Um, you're going to get a lot of sea turtles on those. So the cost of buying cheap mahi at half the price is half that catch might have been sea turtles, endangered sea turtles. So um, bluefin tuna, by the way, bluefin tuna is what's used in the highly regarded sushi restaurants in sashimi. So when you go into, um, into sushi restaurants and order their prized tuna, which is, you know, their spicy tuna, their tuna, they're using bluefin. Bluefin live up to 40 years and what was the weight on bluefin? I think that was like um, bluefin tuna, over 300 pounds. So 40 years and 300 pounds or 20 years and 150 pounds will bioconcentrate a lot of mercury, folks. The stuff that is in sushi restaurants, typical sushi restaurants, is loaded with mercury. I don't know of any single res sushi restaurant ever using albacore. This is sashimi grade, by the way. This is high quality albacore tuna. I don't know of any sushi restaurant um, I'm using this kind of tuna that we use. And there's nothing wrong with it. They just, they're just not in that mindset of using this. A lot of them will use uh, the, blue, the, uh, the bluefin tuna, right? But some of them will use what's called, quote unquote, white tuna. White tuna is not tuna at all. White tuna is escalar. A lot of people will have a, 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 a bad reaction to Escalar. They will, it creates the runs. It gives you diarrhea. It's not a pleasant thing. Um, certain people can handle a few pieces, but there's a tolerance point that once you hit that tolerance point, it will make people sick and produce food-like, uh, foodborne illness symptoms. Um, so if you see white tuna in a sushi restaurant or anywhere, I would avoid it. It's called Escalar. So um, Kathleen's saying, I had our tuna last night. Yeah, tu every Tuesday is gonna be Tuna Tuesday, folks. Tuna Tuesday, um, we sold a ton of tuna last night. Uh, tuna Tuesday will be every Tuesday night, $19.99 for tuna entrees every Tuesday. It's the lowest price we've ever done on it. Uh, even when we first opened, I don't think the tuna entree was $19. And we're actually paying double of what we used to pay for the tuna. Uh, in the last 15 years, the cost of our tuna actually has more than doubled. So, of course, we can't, we couldn't have doubled our price because it would have been, the tuna entree would be like $46 if we doubled our price, $20, $50. I think when we first launched our tuna dish years and years ago, when we first opened, it was about mid-20s, 20, 24 $25, because it was expensive tuna. Uh, and it has more than doubled. So, realistically, if you're working the same ratios of that dish, 
we would um, that this should be fifty dollars right now on our menu, but it's not because I can't charge that. Um, it's it's one of those things um, where the restaurant restaurants have become so much less profitable over the last twenty years because of inflation, cost of rising foods. It's it's pretty it's pretty insane. Um, what has happened with the cost of rising foods and, and what we've seen here since we've been open 17 years um, and a lot of a lot of consumers don't really see that because stores keep fighting for cheap prices and they'll keep putting cheap products in like our two our salmon has probably almost doubled and when we first launched our salmon years ago I think it was $21 it's $29 now and it's it's our price has doubled in salmon um, since we first opened our wild salmon um, so uh, back to, let's talk about the top seven fish that are the highest fish in mercury. Um, so this is going to help you when you go to the store to specifically buy much cleaner seafood. So uh, the highest fish in mercury, the fish that have the highest that you'd want to avoid, okay? Um, king mackerel, king mackerel, marlin, marlin's a nice eating fish too, marlin's a really nice eating fish, Orange Ruffy, believe it or not, Orange Ruffy, and people don't associate Orange Ruffy. Orange Ruffy is a, it lives to be a long time, and that's why it's just, it's an, it's an old fish. Orange Ruffy is um, up on that list. Shark, of course, because shark eat a lot of other fish and just bioconstrate, right? Shark, that's just what they do. Um, swordfish, swordfish is up there. I have not served swordfish because of sustainability issues and because of mercury. I don't think I've ever, never, never served it here at the restaurant. And again, because I had that conversation with Henry Lovejoy from Ecofish back in 1998, 1999 at dinner, um, I became all aware of all this kind of stuff. That was over 20 years ago I had that conversation. Folks, you never know by having a conversation with somebody how it alters their, their life, their career path, things like that. Um, I've had two very profound conversations that have altered, actually three, that have altered my career, my diet, um, my health. Three very profound conversations, and they were all happened as a young chef in my in my mid twenties. The one was with Henry Lovejoy. I sat next to him. He's the owner and founder of Ecofish. Now Henry and this was natural seafood now, and he sat next to dinner with him at a sustainability conference and talked to him for a couple hours on sustainable seafood. Changed the way I bought seafood that day. When I first became the executive chef at um, a country club in Colorado, I was 24 years old. Uh, the lady's name was Jane Denzinger. Her husband was the past president of Woodmore Country Club up in Monument, Colorado. And when I first became the chef there, she had a conversation with me. Marcus, do you think you can source antibiotic and hormone-free meats for the country club? As a 24-year-old chef, I had no idea. There wasn't YouTube back then. There wasn't Google like we had it today. They weren't teaching this stuff in school. You didn't have you didn't have the educational resources to find all this. And I um, I said, first I was like, I had no idea that there, you know, meat contains hormones, and antibiotics. And she brought me in all these photocopied articles, and I read these articles. I said, oh my gosh, this is terrible stuff. Why is this in our food supply? And from that point on, I started sourcing. Hormone-free, antibiotic-free meats, later into grass-fed meats, and then um, one of our members from the country club was Dale Lassiter. And Dale Lassiter, he has a, um, a um, ranch out in uh, uh, Simla, Colorado, S-M-I-L-A, 90,000 acres. If you've read Fast Food Nation, the last chapter is about Dale, how it talks about now there's hope in the world. Dale Lasseter, 90,000 acres, doing everything right, grass-fed beef. I was able to meet Dale Lasseter, make that connection, and, and that just totally changed the way I sourced beef and proteins from there on out. Then the salmon conversation. And that third conversation was with Chris from Boulder Fruit Exchange about how to take my own health into my own hands and really get to the next level. So those three profound conversations happened when I was in my mid-20s that actually have shaped my career and transformed my life so I can continue to educate people and serve the food that we do. So, okay, so highest fish in mercury, here we go. King mackerel, marlin, orange ruffy, shark, and swordfish. We sp I spoke about those. Tilefish from the Gulf of Mexico. Tilefish is a nice eating fish too. I've served that many times in the 90s. At the country club, we would get tilefish FedExed in. Um, tilefish, big eye tuna, tuna, ahi, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the bluefin, tuna. Tuna in general, except for the albacore tuna is not on that tuna list. 
This is the lowest mercury tuna out there. Um, that's been proven. You can Google it. You can look at the studies. You can look at the levels. This has the least amount, the very, much, 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 much less than you go to a sushi restaurant. All right. So, first of all, all seafood, um, to a certain extent, has something wrong with it. Okay. All of our, all of our vegetables, even the certified organic ones, everything has something wrong with it to a certain extent, because it's just our environment. Um, us humans have destroyed our environment, the oceans, the land, the water systems. We've destroyed everything. So, or in the process of just of, of, of putting stuff in there that's compromised. So to have perfect, perfect food is extremely, extremely tough. Um, this is why you need to eat as much healthy food as possible to keep your body detoxifying, drinking high quality water, um, exercising. This is why you need to do things like that so you can actually live healthier and compensate for some of the stuff that you are putting into your body. Super important. You have, this is why you have to be doing this. All right. So, because there's really, it's hard to find a very perfect food system um, no matter where. It's, it's just what we've done. It's what we've done to our environment, unfortunately. All right. So, um, bluefish and grouper. Um, Bluefish and group are on the list. So this is one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fish. The top nine fish to avoid. I'll do this list quickly. Um, king mackerel, marlin, orange ruffy, shark, swordfish, tilefish, most tuna, almost all tuna, um, and bluefish and grouper. We will be getting cans of this tuna or pouches of this tuna so you can make tuna fish with. Of, of, of this uh, high quality line caught tuna. So if you like tuna fish salad, this is what you wanna be using, but don't buy this, it's $18 a pound. All right, we will be getting canned stuff, line caught, pole caught. So our salmon, most of our seafood comes in portions like this. All right, it comes in um, six ounce portions, eight ounce portions, our halibut, halibut's on its way back in, black cod is on its way uh, in for the first time, black cod, also known as sable fish, butter fish, um, that is, uh, that's coming in tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, they sent me the invoice and uh, we paid for it. It's on its way. It's, uh, it's going through FedEx right now. Um, so we have a ton of stuff here. We've set up this, this, this rack here now. So check this out. Um, we have this rack here um, with a bunch of stuff on it. Uh, we do have some bread alone bread left from yesterday, but not much. I think we sold like 90% of the bread from bread alone yesterday. Um, we've added some more alcohol, uh, some more wine and beer. We've added, if you were doing these, um, we're going to be doing like a, a Manhattan kit. Um, so we have this beautiful Luxardo Marciano cherry liqueur. We'll have the good cherries for you. We'll have bodies, uh, bottles of bourbon or, or rye. Uh, we have local onions from Hepworth Farms, uh, Daigley, uh, red onions, uh, organic pears. We have, we have New York State apples. Uh, we have all these really cool stuff. Beet juice is on the rack here. That's back in stock. Nitric oxide, super important for your heart. Uh, getting oxygen, blood flow, just beets are amazing. This is certified organic. Um, pomegranate juice. Pomegranate juice. I'm going to reverse the camera here and show you. When you buy pomegranate juice at the store, folks, it is most likely a blend of things. All right. So this right here, look at the ingredients. Ingredient. Ingredient. Not even plural, ingredient, organic pomegranate juice. These are $14, and there's a, that's the reason why these are $14. If you go to Whole Foods, if they're the same price, it might even be a little bit more. That is the reason. No concentrate, no other juices. Um, a lot of things are like, are like um, cranberry, uh, cranberry juice is usually called cranberry cocktail because it has other juices in it. So this here is pure, pure and only not from concentrate, pure pomegranate juice. Same thing with the beet juice. This stuff is amazing. All right, so um, beet juice, awesome, organic. All right, so uh, something else that's pretty interesting. When you're eating those dried cranberries, by the way, uh, craisins are called craisins. Those craisins were never, ever, that product is a byproduct of the cranberry juice industry. So what Ocean Spray does is ocean spray will juice these, press these cranberries. And what do you, what do you have left uh, when you have, when you do, um, when you, when you do cranberry juice? 
you have the skins left, right? Imagine pressing a cranberry and getting the juice out. Pressing a grape, you get the, you get the juice out and the grape is still left there. So what the cranberry, the craisin industry has done, folks, is they take those dried, pressed, the flesh is there, the skin is there. They take those, they save them, pump them with glucose, um, coloring, sulfur dioxide, and basically then dry them, finish drying the process, uh, but they pump them up with, with, with glucose and they call them craisins. To get a cranberry, a dried cranberry, that is 100% from the cranberry itself before it gets juiced is a hard thing to find. We have a source for those. We haven't brought them in for a while. Uh, so when you're buying craisins, folks, you're buying a byproduct of the juice industry. That's how that works. Um, so um, beware if you're buying craisins. Take a look at the ingredients on them because they will have, they will have um, some kind of filler in it because you just hey, you have to because you're you squeeze them and flatten them down. They got to plump them up somehow. So typically that's what's done. And of course the big brands like Ocean Spray. There's a reason why Ocean Spray spells, sells craisins because they have a large byproduct of what they're juicing from. So it's all pulp and it's there and it's so that that's how that works. Um, we can get some of the really good cranberries in that that are they're not a byproduct but a, of of that. Um, we have organic coconut blossom sap, dehydrated organic coconut blossom sap. I got a, I think a 55 pound box coming in today, hopefully, or tomorrow. We're gonna have um, coconut blossom sap, dehydrated coconut blossom sap on the table here for you. It's the best sweetener out there. It's dried, it's brown, it looks like um, a brown, um, it looks like Sucanat, uh, sugarcane natural. Uh, the Sucanat brand. Looks like that, high in minerals, has some fiber in it. It's a really, if you wanna sweeten anything, that's what you use. Do not, folks, do not be using white sugar right now. White sugar, no white sugar, no donuts. I keep telling people this, don't drink sweetened chocolate milk. All this stuff is terrible for your immune system. Keep your immune system strong, all right? So, as a public service, we are giving out free gloves. Free gloves as a public service, no purchase necessary, just come on in. Typically, we open every we open the doors every day at five o'clock. Is typically what we do. Um, if you have a grocery order, if you want to pick up ten pounds of salmon or salmon and mahi and some things, um, you can call. And if we're here, we're glad to get you that. But it's, it's just keep in mind that the door the doors officially open at five o'clock, five to eight. All of our we want we'd like all of our to go orders in by seven thirty. Uh, so the kitchen wraps up at eight o'clock. It's a very short service. We're doing all, tonight's is pizza, buy one, get one pizza. Um, so that is here tonight, buy one, get one pizza. I'll have the pizzas posted, uh, same pizzas as last week um, that we're doing. So that's the story with that. Um, let's see, that's about it. I have to get on an eight o'clock phone, a nine o'clock phone call, my mastermind phone call, my coaching phone call this morning uh, with my uh, momentum uh, buddy, my uh, coaching buddy. So I have to get on that phone call in a couple of minutes. Folks, we really appreciate all the business. Uh, that we're getting a lot. There's a tremendous amount of support that you guys are giving us and we really, really appreciate it. Jamie and I could not be doing it without you. Uh, we really do appreciate all that. And we're just trying to be creative and move forward and being able to get you high quality food at a good price so you can, you can enjoy gourmet food, healthier food, real food. And of course, if you partake in, in wine and, and wine and stuff like that, we have a lot of the wines here for sale that the wineries that Jamie and I have personally been to that we've endorsed personally, uh, that we know the owners. A lot of those, we're selling a lot of those wines. Um, our goal is still to be able to provide those and not, not veer off of our path because it'd be easy to buy a lot of cheap wines um, right now and, and just blow them out. It'd be e very easy to do that. So we still staying true to our standards of smaller producers, um, smaller distributors, things like that, and providing you a, a great product. So um, that's it for now, folks. We appreciate it, and I've got to get going. Stay tuned later for Jamie. Uh, four o'clock today, she does her around four-ish. She will do her um, Facebook Live, her cocktail of the day, happy hour with Jamie. So... Okay, Sean is saying, I bought five pounds of frozen scallops. How do I separate them without buying the whole package? That's a great question. So everything we sell, most everything we sell comes in, in these portions, pouched in portions, right? So scallops do not, and neither does the calamari. If you bought scallops or calamari, you take a colander, strainer, put it in your sink, take the scallops out of the package, drip cold water for about 15, 20 minutes, or minutes. just drip cold water, 
um, onto the corner of the frozen block or in the center. Within 15, 20 minutes, you'll be able to start taking pieces off of that. And then from there, you can take those two, three pieces, four pieces, put it back in the freezer, and then you'll have a section that you can just then thaw in your refrigerator. Or if you wanted to quickly do it, you just run a little bit of water on it and that will get it done pretty quick. Same thing, uh, somebody called me last week and said, I bought this block of frozen chicken, Marcus. What do I do? It wasn't from us, it was from a distributor. What do I do? Same thing, colander, dripping cold water, because you're not gonna eat 10 pounds of chicken at one time. He was like, I can't eat 10 pounds of chicken at one time. And I didn't know this. And the vendor sold this. This company sold this to me. And it this. So uh, scallops are the one thing that we sell that are in the block and so are... Um, um, calamari. Calamari is two and a half pounds. Calamari is super easy. You do that with the running water and three, four minutes, you're pulling off what you need and putting back what you don't. So that's how you do that, Sean. Hopefully that helps. We wish we did have um, these I, um, scallops that were um, individually frozen, but we don't. The scallops that we do sell are very, very high quality. No chems. They're a dry scallop means they're not pumped with anything. No sodium. Um, um, tripolyphosphate that are found in a lot of seafood. Uh, so it's a pure, pure, pure product. So, all right, Sean, good luck with that. And hopefully you enjoy those scallops because scallops are amazing, amazing quality. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. Got to get going. Got to get on my phone call here and we'll talk to you later.